talk about hope. Page 99. Page 99, the top of the page. It's the Moda'ani, the Moda'ani. Let's look at the English and the Hebrew. English first. I thank you, living and eternal sovereign, for your kindness in restoring my soul. How great is your faithfulness. Mil say Moda'af, he must say Moda. Moda, Moda'ani, la fanecha, melechai v'kayam, shechazar tabi nishmati, b'chemla. Rabba Emunatecha. How great is your faithfulness. We often speak of people being faithful to God. This moda, which is the first line we say upon awakening and you're ready to get dressed, speaks that God is faithful to each one of us. Because every morning that we awaken is an example of life and hope once again. I don't think necessarily typical Jews view Judaism as optimistic, but inherently the tradition is optimistic. From the way we awaken in the morning to the way we understand chet, sin, because chet means we just missed the mark and we're going to improve next time. Every time we say baruch atah, when we say atah, we're talking about you. Well, there's only a you if you've got a two-way connection happening. Anytime you and I, as a Jew, say baruch atah, it means that you and I are viewed as talking directly to God, interacting individually with God, directly with God, without any intermediary, without an intercessor, it's just you and me. There are a dozen different ways of looking at Judaism, and all of them point to optimism as a system, as a way of looking at the world. We rise, pages 103 and 104, the early morning Birchot Shachar, pages 103 and 104. Boruch ato adonai Eloheinu melech olam Asher natan lasech vivino Lahavchin ben yom uven lo Boruch ato adonai Eloheinu melech olam Sha'asani v'tsalmo Boruch ato adonai Eloheinu melech olam Shasani ben Chorin, Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Shasani Israel, Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Pokea Hibrim, Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Malbi Sharumim, one zero four. Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Matir Asurim. Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Zokef Kifufim. Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Rokahar et Salamoyim. Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Hamechin Mitzade Gaver. Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Shasa Likol Tsarki. Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Ozer Yisrael Bigvurao. Baruch Atornoi, Eloheinu Melacholam, Oter Yisrael Betif Ara, 104. 
Baruch Ato Adonoi Eloheinu Melech Olam Hanoten Leyoef Koach. Uneno yom vachol yom lachen lachesh rachamim benech benechol reinu v'tiglenu chasidim tovim baruch atarnoi gamel chasidim tovim lamo Yisrael. And as receded a moment ago, I spoke about optimism, and here it's the bottom of page one zero four, the bottom of the brachot shachar. Uneno and gamel chasidim. This is how we start our day. And the hope is the hope. The hope is the hope. The hope is that every day is going to start anew and afresh with opportunities to bring kindness into the world. Look at page 105, a small teaching from Avraham Yoshua Heschel. Page 105, on the left-hand side, the paragraph is labeled Descendants of Abraham. What is at stake in our lives is more than the fate of one generation. In this moment, we, the living, are Israel. The tasks begun by the patriarchs and prophets and carried out by countless Jews of the past are now entrusted to us. No other group has superseded them. We are the only channel of Jewish tradition, those who must save Judaism from oblivion, those who must hand over the entire past to the generations to come. We are either the last, the dying Jews, or else we are those who will give new life to our tradition. Rarely in our history has so much been dependent upon one generation. We shall either forfeit or enrich the legacy of the ages. Each one of us is essential for the future. Each one of us is, is essential for the present. Page 112. 112, the Psalm for Shabbat. Miss Moore Shirley Yom Hashabat, Tov the Hodot Ladonoi, Olezam Er Lishimcha El Yon, Olezam Er Lishimcha El Yon, Lahagid Babok Er Hastecha, Vemonat Balelot, Ale a son of Ale Nabel, Ale Higayon Bechinor. Miss Moore, Shirley Yom Hashabat, Tov Lodot Ladonoi, Olazam Er Lishimcha Elyon, Olazam Er Lishimcha Elyon, Kisimach Tanoi before Lecho, Bemase Yodecha Aranen, Magan Luma Secharanoi, Maod Amaku Machshabo Techo. Miss Moore, Shirley Yom Hashabat, Tov Lodot Ladonoi, Olazam Er Lishimcha Elyon, Olazam Er Lishimcha Elyon. Shabbat <laughs> 
Page 122, Baruch Shamar. Baruch Baruch Omer Ve'oseh Baruch Ozer Umekayim Baruch Merachem Al Haaretz Baruch Merachem Al Habriot Baruch Meshalem Sachar Tov Lireof Baruch Chai Laad Vekayom Lo Netzach Baruch Pode Umatzil Baruch Shemo The singer, the one who gives life to the world, the sovereign who is praised and glorified forever and ever, this is your great name. Baruch Ata Adonai, sovereign, celebrated with songs of praise. Yachir cheol amim melech mishubachim var adei atshma gadol baruch atar noi melech malo batish pachut Let's look at the last line of English we just said. The singer, the one who gives life to the world, this is your name. The singer, the one. There's a point of origin to the entire universe. And it's the point of origin which is the name. It's not, hey, Bob, or how are you doing, Sue? It's the point of origin of all reality. And the reality beyond the reality that you and I know, because there is bound to be a reality beyond the reality that you and I <coughs> are exposed to and even expert in. And the, the reason for the origination of the everything and beyond, the reason is the name of God. The reason of existence is God's name. And you and I can talk to God anytime we want, and we call God by God's name, first name. When I was growing up in school, we called the principal Mr. or Ms. or Mrs. or Dr. Teacher, Mr. and Mrs. We stood up when the principal and teacher walked into the room. You and I talked to God by God's first name. So you and I are as close to the entirety of all experience and beyond as we choose to be. That's Brooke Shamar. That should make you just go all whoo hoo inside. Now we're ready for the ashray. Because we're excited, right? We're excited because we have this. Page 136. 136. Ashray, 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 Tilal David, Aramim Cholahai Hamelech, Bavarcha Shimcha Leolam Void, Behold Yom Avarcheko, Vahalala Shimcha Leolam Void, Gadol Arnoim Lolmod, Vlig Dulato in Heker, Dolador Yishabach Masercha, Ugvorotecha Yagidu, Hadar kavod ho decha, 
Hadar <laughs> So me charnoi l'chol hanoflim v'zokef l'chol hakvufim ene chol elacha yisabero v'yatano tenem et achlam v'itom poteach et yodecha umaspia l'chol charatzon tzadik charnoi b'chol derachov v'chasid b'chol maasov. Korov arnoi l'chol korov l'chol ashek ruhu v'emet Ritzon yreav ya'ase v'yet shavatam yishma v'yoshim Shomer arnoi et kol o'avov v'yet kol o'shim yashmid T'ilat arnoi d'aber pi v'yvoreh kol basar shem g'chol elam v'oed v'anach nunavarech yah May I Hallelujah. And on the top of page 141, <clears throat> pardon me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, El Bikkad Shah, Hallelujah, Birkyauza, Hallelujah, Vigvaratov, Hallelujah, Kurov Gulo, Hallelujah, Beteka Shofar, Hallelujah, Benevel Vechinor, Hallelujah, Betof Umachol, Hallelujah, Bamini Vogov, Hallelujah, Betziltele Shema, Hallelujah, Betziltele Trua, Kol and Shema Tehalel Yah. Hallelujah, call and shema te hallelujah, hallelujah. Ya la 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 la, ya la 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 la, ya la 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 la, ya 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 la 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 la, ya la 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 la. We look at page 142. It's time to study a little bit of Nach. Tanakh is the Hebrew nickname for the Hebrew Bible. Torah, t, nevim, n, ch, tuvim, ch, Tanakh. But when we're not talking about Torah and we're talking about the other 34 books, we sometimes call them Nach. So let's study a little bit of Nach today. And at the top of page 142, we have a passage from Divrei Yomim, the book of Chronicles. This is one of the first usages of the Baruch Ata Adonai form. So when you and I say Baruch Ata Adonai, in a way, we're quoting King David. And you see here just at the upper passage on the English side, it's the last word of the second line onto the third line. Blessed you, Adonai, God of our ancestors, Israel, and stop, and then he continues. And here in Hebrew, it's Vayvarok David, Israel. And then he continues on, and he's saying his own exclamation. I don't know if he did this spontaneously or if he took time and he crafted it. But he puts this forth, and this is his time period, which is 3,000 years ago. And Solomon uses a Baruch Hatav form. And there are one or two other form, uh, uh, usages in the 
in the Hebrew Bible, and then later that becomes our standard. It becomes a standardized form. And some of the brochatas are just one line. Hamotzi lechem mena aretz, shakon And some of them are a paragraph long, and some are even a couple pages long. When you and I are saying Baruch Atah, you and I are echoing the words of our ancestors who've tried each in his or her own time to connect to something that is occasionally elusive, hopefully present, available, or distant. Baruch Atah is a way of searching to make a connection. On page 147. Shochen on morom ve kadoshem oom ve chatuv rananu Sari kim borono e lay sharim nova te hilo befi sharim ti tala all of the re sari kim ti borah of the shon hasidim ti tromam. Ove kerev kedoshim tit kadosh Ove makalot rivevot amcha bet Yisrael Lodo lahalel, l'shavech l'foer, l'romem lahader, l'rech l'lekhalais Hakol yresh rovetish b'chot, t'avi ben yishayim, avdecha meshichecho Yishtabach shimcha, l'od malkenu Ho'el ha'melech, ha'gadol v'ha'kadosh Bashamayim varet ki lecha noe aronai Eloheinu kole avoteinu vimoteinu shir ushvacha halel vezimra ozumem shala neta akidula ugvura tehilav etif eret. Kiddusha umachut, brachot vorot, meatav yarolam, barukhatarnoi, el magadabatish pachot, el odot adonani flot, abocher bishre zimra, melech el cheolamim. Hatzikadish is on page 148. Yit gadal, vit kadash, shime rabo, vilma, di brachir, tevim of hakute, bechai hon of yom echon of chai hobe yesrael, bagala of his man kari, vimru amen, ye shime rabo, bevarach of my own, yit barak, vish tabak, vit parvatum vinase. Vit hadar, vit ale, vit alal shmeri krisha brechu. Le la min ko berchata, vishirato, tush berchata, vinechemato, damiram yamavimro, amen. Before we rise for the borchu, please turn back in the sidur to page number 26. Page number 26. Traditionally, this is recited on Friday night, but I also uh, recite it on Saturday morning. We just lost Randy Sherman, who had been a very important part 
of our synagogue for decades. And we just had the funeral yesterday. The family came from the funeral from the cemetery yesterday, came to show last night. Family's here now today. And there's a very specific greeting, but it's much more than a greeting. It's on page 26. In a way, I think it's kind of a prayer. But it's also a recognition. It's an expression. It's a hope. It's a need. And we're seeking to bring an expression with limited words. We're trying to give voice to the too many emotions that are welled up within us. We're trying to bring comfort in a time of great loss. And so we call out and we don't even use the typical name of God. We invent a new name of God. As far as I understand, it's the only time that we use this with this greeting to mourners. And we nickname God Hamakom, which means the place. And in my head, I understand that as the everywhere. Because your place is all confused and upside down. Your insides are all confused and upside down. And you may not even feel like you know where your feet are on the ground or, or how to sit in a chair. And we say, I'm a comb. And I want all of us to know this phrase, which is why it's here. It's on page 26. And I want us to see what it says. It's on the English side, may the divine, but it really is the place. May the, may the place, may the every place comfort you along with all the other mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. And we stop and we say to each and every one of you, Hamakom, may the every place, may the every place be close. May the every place be close. I'm walking around. May the every place be close to you. May the every place be close to you. May the every place be close to you. And in addition to using the term, may the every place be close, the term is, may be comforted along with all the others who are mourning throughout Zion and Jerusalem. Zion is a mountaintop. It's the prominent mountain in the old city of Jerusalem. And when you're on this prominent mountain, you have a view that takes hold of you and can literally take your eyes to great distances. And that's probably why the name Zion becomes associated with not just the city of Jerusalem, but the country of Israel. And then thousands of years later, we have the modern term Zionism from Zion. It's this prominent mountain. And there are Jews who've been in loss and emotional upheaval over the centuries in Zion and Jerusalem. And so this expression, which is trying to say something that we can't articulate well enough, says that you're part of a community and that community surrounds you. And it's your local community, but it's also a community of centuries, millennia past, and centuries, millennia into the future. You are constituent elements to a household, and you're essential in your part, and we love you, and we surround you. That's what Hamakum is all about. And for us to take a moment to pause the service and say, in effect, talking to our people and seeing who they are and where they are has to be done before we continue with the pages reminds us that people are why we gather in prayer. Trying to put ourselves as a community into a different reality and understanding of, of who we are and how we are. People first and now ready to pray. And so, if you will, we turn back to page, pardon me one moment, 149, and we rise for the Borch on page 149. 
Baruchu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai Baruch Le'olam Baruch Top of 150 Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Yotzer or Varech Hoshech Ose Shalom Uvare et Hako Baruch Ata Adonai Our God Sovereign of time and space Forming light and creating darkness Bringing harmony while creating all And on the upper left corner in the margin Entitled All Thank You short stanza. It is not you alone or we or those others who pray. All things pray. All things pour forth their souls. The heavens pray. The earth prays. Every creature and every living thing prays. In all life there is longing. Creation is itself but a longing, a kind of prayer of the Almighty. We may be seated. That's the first blessing. Creation, light, being part of the entire universe. And now on page 154, you see a little English title on page 154. And it speaks of God's great love. So the framework of the prayer book is creation and love. And then in just a moment, the Shema. The Shema is not really a prayer. The Shema is a proclamation of who each one of us is as a component of everyone else. We say, hear, O Israel. There's one God. We're all part of that. That's the Shema. In order to get to that point, we have to talk about creation, reality, existence, and love. The top of page 154 on the English side, the first paragraph. You have loved us deeply, Adonai, our God, and showered us with boundless compassion. Avinu Malkenu, for the sake of our ancestors who trusted in you and to whom you taught the laws of life, so may you be gracious to us and instruct us. Kind creator, have compassion for us. Open our hearts so that we may understand and with love discern, hear, and study. Observe, perform, and fulfill all the teachings of your Torah with love. Enlighten our eyes with your Torah. Attach our hearts to your mitzvot. Unify our hearts to love and revere your name so that we never lose hope. As we trust in your great, holy, awe-inspiring name, we will delight and rejoice in your deliverance. And now there are those who wear a talit. We reach out and we gather the four corners together. And we hold the tzitzit, the corners together. In order to pray, we've got to be paying attention to everyone. And these little strings symbolize Jewish people all over the world. We literally are gathering each other into our own hands. The bottom stands on the Hebrew side, also found in the red ink at the very bottom in the transliteration, Vahavienu. Vahavienu l'shalom me'arba kanfot haaretz v'tolichenu k'omimiyot k'omimiyot le'artsenu Ki el po el yeshuot ata uvanu vacharta mikolam velashon vekeraftan leshim chagadol selam. 
bemet to horolkha o ya kherkha o ya kherkha pa hawa pa rokha tarnoi ha bokher ba mo israel pa hawa 155 Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Me avto et Adonai Elohecha בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבבך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשכבך ובקומך וקשרתם לאות על ידך והיו לטוטפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשערכם. A few moments of silence, perhaps on page 156. The middle page 156 on the Hebrew side. Vayomer Adonai el Moshe lemor taber el bnei Yisrael v'mar tolim v'asulahem tzitzi al kanfei v'gedehem l'doratam v'nanu al tzitzi hakanav petil techelut v'yalacham l'tzitzi. וראיתם אותו, וזכרתם את כל מצוות ארנוי, ועשיתם אותם, ולא תטרו אחרי לבבכם ואחרי עיניכם, אשר אתם זונים אחריהם, למען תזכרו, ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני, אני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני, אני אלוהיכם, אדוני אלוהיכם, אמת. On page 157 on the English side. <clears throat> the bottom two stanzas on the English side. Truly, you are the ruler of your people, a mighty sovereign who takes up their cause. Truly, you are at the beginning, and you will be at the end. Aside from you, we have no ruler who can redeem and deliver. In the middle of page 158. מי חמוך פועלים אדוני, מי כמוך נדר בקודש, נורתי לוט עושה פלם, 
Shira Khadasha Shib Khuge Ulim Lashim Khasafat Hayam Yahad Kulam Hodubim the Khuyam Ro Adonayim Loch La Olam Void Tsur Yisrael Tumabi Esrat Yisrael Ufadeh Hinamecha Yehuda Yisrael Go Aleinu Adonai Tzvot Shemo Kedosh Yisrael We begin out loud on pages 159, 160, 161, and thereafter, a few opportunities of a private prayer. The traditional text continues until 166, but sometimes people fashion their own prayers. We begin aloud, and after 161, we stop, and we're in then a quiet mode. So the voice of others, the voice of others kind of escort us into a place where we're private. We begin aloud, and then we're left to our own thoughts and ideas. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Elohe Avoteinu Vimoteinu Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel Elohe Leah Ha el hagadol hagibor vanaron el elion gomel chasadim tovim vekone ha kol vezocher chastel vodvim ahot umevi goel livne vnehem laman shmo biyahav a one sixty melechos there for kedo mashiach uma gain. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mogen Avram, Fokait Saram, Ata Gibor, the Alam Maranoi, Mechaye Metimata, Ravla Hoshia, Mashif Haruach, Morid Hagashem, Mechalkel Hoim Berchesed, Mechaye Metim Berachamim Rabim, So Mech no Flim, Verofe Holim, O Matir Asurim, O Mechaye Munato, Lishene Afar, Mircha Mocha Bal Givurot, O Meda. Melechmeo <laughs> Kaka tuva ya nivyecha, vikara zel zev yamar. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzavot, Melok Haaretz Kvaro, Oz Vekol, Rosh Gadol, Adir Vechazak, Mashmim Kol, Minasim Leomad Serafim, Lomatam Baruch Yomeru. Baruch Kavana Mimkomo, Mimkom Cham Al Kenu Tofia, Vetim Lochaleno, Kimecha Kim Anachdu Loch, Matai Tim Loch Betzion, Bikaro Biamene Lamba Ed Tishkon. Tit Gadal, the Tit Kadash, Betok, Yerushalayim, Ircha, Ledor Vador, O Nitzach, Nitzachim, Vienno, Tirena, Machotecha, Kadavar, Hamur, Beshire, Ozecha, 
on your day, David Mashiach, Tikecho. Yim lo khan el alam al haq tsiyon le dor vador hallelujah le dor vador nagi galakha ala neitsa netsakhim kedishat khanaktish be shivkha kha elohenu mi pinu lo yamush le alam vaed ki el melakro vagrosh ata baruch ata arnoi ha el akadosh Please turn to page 167. <coughs> Excuse me, page 167. Yitgar al vikarash shimei rabba Be'omal di Amen Yehei shimei rabba mevorach Olam liol me'olmayo yit barach Yit barach v'yish tabach v'yit parach 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 Amen. <laughs> In a moment, we begin the Torah service on page 168, and we also have a prayer that we'll be saying for our hostages in just a moment. <clears throat> on page 168. In Kamochavo, 
Please rise. Vayu hi bin so aharon vayom er moshe kum aronoi vea futsu oyavecha vea nusu mesanecha me panecha ki mitzion te tse Kimitzion te tse toram Udavar Adonai Mirushalayim Barak Shenatan Torah Toram Barak Shenatan Torah Toram Laamo Yisrael in a moment of special prayer, a week after, five, six days after the hostages were stolen and taken from all of us, we placed this empty chair here with a list of the names of the then abducted, stolen ones. And many have been returned, but there are many still trapped, imprisoned, for all we know, being tortured. These are our people, and they were taken because they were Jews. They were taken from an outdoor music festival. They were taken from their homes. They were taken from their beds because it was 6, 6.30 in the morning. And we pray. God of Israel, our rock and our redeemer, God of mercy, of compassion, we pray, we plead, they return these precious and beloved people, the captured and the missing, who have cruelly and heartlessly been torn from their homes and carried off to our enemy's territory. We are terrified, contemplating their fate and horrified at the thought of what the missing and the captured are suffering right now, the lay beyond our reach and our capacity to save them. And so we plead before you, Father of mercy, be at their side, support them, protect them, and quickly bring them back to the embrace of their families and all who love them, as you have declared Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will restore the captives of Jacob's tents and have mercy on their dwelling places. We beseech you, Adonai, quickly fulfill your word. Here I am with you. I will watch over you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. Indeed, I will not leave you until I have done what I have said to you.
the top of 171, Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonai Kadosh Shmo Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonai Kadosh Shmo Kalu Larnoi Tin Ramama Shmo Yaktov Lecha Adonai Agedulam Vagevura Vatiferet Vanet Sak Vahod Kiko Bashamayim Uvarets Kiko Bashamayim Uvarets Rommemo, Rommemo, Adonai Eloheinu, Beishtachabu, Beishtachabu, Leharam Raglav Kadoshu. Rommemo, Rommemo, Adonai Eloheinu, Veishtachabu, Veishtachabu, Lehar Kodsho, Lehar Kodsho, Kikadosh, Adonai Eloheinu. We are seated. Acharit Hayamim, man. Acharit Hayamim. The end of days. Yeah. The end of days. Yeah. This yeah. is it. Oh. This is the, he's, he's talking to his kids. Oh, what's your question? What's your question? Okay, well then let's get let me let me get started, but then we'll get we'll, we'll go. Is it today? Is it today? Is it today? Oh, that's 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 a year from now. <laughs> That's next year. Yeah, okay. Got him in Georgia. God created Georgia too. It's okay. All right. Torah reading. Here we are. Um, on page two hundred ninety-eight, two ninety-eight in in this book. This is the Chumash. The Chumash is the five books of Moses in book form. It's called Chumash. Chumash is the Hebrew word. It comes from the word Chamesh. Chamesh is the number five. So. Um, the, the book of the five, you might say, is Chamesh or Chumash. So that's the Chumash. The Torah, obviously, is, is the scroll, and the Chumash is the contents of the five books of Moses in book form. And the reason that we're in a synagogue is that 2,400 years ago, somebody came up with the idea of reading the Torah in public. And they gathered people together. And... They probably built a building. And if Randy were there, they would have set out refreshments. Um, because Randy always fed. God bless that girl. She was always making sure that everybody was nourished and sustained. Um, thank God of, you know, for all of our moms and grandmothers and great grandmothers out there. They fed us and they kept us well. So eventually the institution of having synagogues grew in prominence, covering all over Israel and the Middle East. And we know we have a lot of indications that synagogues were up and running 2,300 years ago. And Jewish people came and they read a passage of the Torah every single week together. We read together. We eat together. We pray together. We grieve together. We celebrate together. We do everything together. And eventually, after coming together and reading Torah every single week, certain prayers began to originate. And those prayers accumulated 
and some were recited before the Torah reading, and some were recited after the Torah reading, and they grew and grew and grew, and eventually somebody came up with the idea of printing those prayers in a book to making it convenient. And that's how the prayer book came to be. So our, our origination of prayer is study. And study has to be done interactively. If I just read a book over and over again all by myself, all I know is my own idea. But if I study with you and you study with me, we generate new ideas. So the origin of Jewish prayer is learning from each other about something important that we share in common. The origin of Jewish prayer is learning together about something we, we take hold of, but we can always grow in. That's prayer. So we're on page 298, and the scene is as follows. Joseph has become the viceroy of Egypt. There was a famine. He's a very smart man. He sees that there is a surplus. He advises Pharaoh to stockpile surplus while there is bounty. The famine is approaching, and Egypt can withstand the drought, and you and I all know about droughts because we hear about them in the news. Egypt can withstand the drought because of the st stored up surplus from the previous years. And both people in Egypt and also people outside of Egypt begin to come to the royal court to buy food. So Egypt becomes the wealthiest nation in the known world and also the most influential nation in the known world. And Joseph is the chief operations officer of that multi drachma or whatever they called it back then, <laughs> exchange operation. He's an economic officer, he's a political officer, he's an administrator of the court, he's second to Pharaoh. His father is old man Jacob. Jacob and the other brothers leave Canaan during the time of drought and they move to Egypt and they're settling now there under the protection of the royal court because Joseph is second to Pharaoh. And they've lived here now for 17 years. And Jacob, at the age of 147, recognizes his death. And he calls his sons to his bedside to say a farewell. And some people call this the blessing of Jacob. Here it's on page 298. And each passage is really just two or three sentences. It's very short. But as we read and study them a little bit, you might ask yourself, to the 12 sons that old man Jacob is offering these words, is each of these a blessing or is it something else? That's how I want to start. Okay, Dan, you got a question? What's your question All right. or comment? I, yeah, I know you wanted me to ask about that first verse. But okay. I, instead, I had a strange uh, thought, um, and with all due respect to everyone here, it's interesting that Jacob spent most of his days away from Israel. He didn't live in the boundaries. And yet it's very important that he demand that Joseph take him back and bury him with the family plot. And I was thinking, why didn't he, A, want to be buried next to his beloved Rachel? And why was it necessary after he's lived 17 peaceful years in Egypt? Most Jews, when they settle down and form a city, they consecrate an area so they can have their own cemetery. And I'm just curious why it was so important for him to be taken back. That's a fascinating question. It's a great question. Didn't he worry about being uninterred? 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 Yeah. Uh, we don't know. In Egypt? We don't know. Oh. Bernie, you said 147 years he lived, Joseph lived. How, how about the rest of the community? Uh, when, mm -hmm. At what age do we think or do we know uh, the, the age that they passed away? Joseph is described as at 110. So Abraham is 175, Isaac is 180-something. Um, Isaac is older than Abraham, according to the Torah, the way, whatever the numbers were. 
and Jacob is 147, uh, Joseph is 110. The other brothers' names are not mentioned in terms of age. Abraham, uh, Moses dies at 120, Aaron dies, at, we think, at 123, unclear. Whatever those numbers meant. Um, but, um, you know, Dan raises a very important point. Jacob is living in the land of Canaan. He runs away from his elder twin brother, competition. He lives in Syria for a time, marries, ultimately has four wives, 11 sons, one daughter. He's lived there for 20 years, leaves Syria, comes back, settles as a nomad in what we call Canaan and Israel. Then Joseph moves down to Egypt. So Jacob has been moving around. He's a nomad. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are all nomads. That's their mindset. That's their psychology. So why is it important for him to be buried back in the land of Canaan? And the better question is, how come he doesn't marry, uh, how come he isn't buried to his beloved Rachel? Rachel dies in childbirth of the last son, Benjamin, and she's buried by the side of the road. It's in Bethlehem. Rachel is buried in Bethlehem, whereas Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and Leah are buried in Hebron, Hebron, H-E-B-R-O-N, Hebron in Hebrew, Hebron. So, and they're two different cities. They're, you know, 20 minutes apart, Bethlehem and, and Hebron. So why, why does not And I don't know why. Never thought about it. It's a great question. Maybe as, well, what do you think? If he's, if the whole focus on the patriarchs is a nomadic lifestyle, why is it important to be buried in a specific family plot? Because it's family. Could be. Could be. So if he's in Egypt, maybe he's looking down the, the future road. How would his remains be treated if his remains were left in Egypt? I mean, the world changes. There's always a new board of directors, right? Joseph is a member of the board, but in a while he's going to die, and there'll be a new board of directors come along. How are they going to treat buried Israelites in Egypt? foreign land. Well, I mean, but 17 years, that you get kind of used to this, you know, you do. where all the Circle Ks are. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You're exactly, you do know where all the Circle Right. Exactly. So. I mean, so was the land there? Well, I mean, Pharaoh promised it to him. No, you can't guarantee that. There's always a new board of directors. The other land they purchased. Exactly. Right. So, and and if, and if we fast forward, okay, Jacob is taken and he's buried in Canaan. Fast forward three Torah readings into the book of Exodus, so three to four weeks from now, when there's finally the Exodus with Moses and Miriam and Aaron, and Moses takes Joseph's bones in a casket out of Egypt and buries that casket in Israel, but there's no mention made of all the other brothers. Remember, Joseph has tw 11 brothers and one sister, right. and there's no mention made of, of their deaths. When you, th when you think about it, there's this glaring emptiness between the end of Genesis and the beginning and the early middle of the book of Exodus. There's this huge emptiness of what happened to everybody else? May, may, uh, maybe they cared, but maybe they didn't write it down. Well, I don't know. It's not, it's not in the book. It's not here. They weren't as important to their father, and so they just trickled. They trickled, maybe. So, so look, there were Jew, Jewish people being buried in all kinds of places all over the world for millennia. Who in Israel would have thought that someday there'd be a cemetery of Jews in Mobile, Alabama? or in Selma, or Demopolis, or, you know, all these fairly obscure locations. Really obscure, like Boca Raton, really obscure. <laughs> or Brooklyn, or Queens. You know I mean? Where, who would live expect just to be live, buried in Queens? Wow. So, <laughs> um, so we, we move, and we, but 
I mean, that, that's a function of families. So families move. And even at our beginning point, families moved sometimes as families, sometimes as individuals. So the next question is, what do we do when somebody is dying? And how do we treat the family? And here, Jacob says, we ought to get together because I need to talk to you. Jacob has a communications. He has a send-off to his children. And, and that, that speaks to me deeply, that he's able to speak to his kids. And there may have been grandchildren there as well, even great-grandchildren. So, we talk, so let's look at what he talks to We're on page 298. And it's on page 298. It's, it's the first line of 49, and then it's on page 299. And he's speaking to Ruvain, the first son. Amen. Amen. So, Ruvain is the eldest, yes, sir. So, uh, so, how do you consecrate a cemetery when a new, when a group of people come move to Mobile, and the first thing they always say, the first thing you have to do is you have to find a place to for the cemetery. Now, according to tradition, and we, there are. Archaeological indicators and uh, historical records and writings, and we will call them minute notes um, from varying centuries across the world. And when a Jewish community settles in a new place, usually even before they build a synagogue, the first thing they do is they buy land for a cemetery. And there is a way of consecrating a land. I, don't, I hope there was consecrated 120 years ago when Ahav uh, said built. I presume it did. So, but there's a ceremony. And at the heart of the ceremony is saying certain prayers and certain psalms. And um, there's, you make a procession. And so the people involved, which would be people who paid the bill or people who showed up, and, and maybe a teacher or the rabbi if you've got one, you march in a procession around the boundary of the land and you say certain psalms and as you're marching in procession around the boundary of the land seven times the marching demarcates the perimeter Ooh, like Jericho. it's so there and the number seven that's as you know very important in jewish life so I, in a way, we're pacing off the land, which probably in some way harkens back to the idea of ownership, of, you know, four degrees latitude and six degrees longitude or whatever those things are. Um, that's how you dedicate a cemetery. And it's called a Hanukkah. Remember, what's Hanukkah mean? Dedication. So dedication of it is Hanukkah ta it's Beit Kvarot or Beit Olam. There are two names for a cemetery. Beit HaKever, which means the house of the graves, or Beit Olam. Olam means forever. Beit Olam is the house of forever, the house of eternity. So that's how you dedicate a Jewish cemetery. Cool. That was my question. I reserved the right for a third question. Granted. I don't know if the new sections had the same ceremony when they purchased new sections. I know that, that what we have now is not what we bought initially in the 19th. 
we <laughs> we bought what we now call the middle, but the middle was the first. <laughs> we bought the middle land, and we began to bury in the middle. And then we needed more. So we, I think we already had owned the first section, which was closer to the street. So it's middle and then closest to the street. And then when we began to fill up the closest to the street section, we began to bury in the far section. So it was A, B, C, because the population called for it. But it's my understanding that we bought all the land at the same time. So we just didn't prepare it for use as a cemetery until the, the need arose. And we actually do have another piece of land adjacent to the newest section, but we haven't even begun to use it because the, the current new section, which is where we are now, has significant property available for future graves. Are you talking about if somebody dies in one location, moving somebody to a burial somewhere else? Yeah, way it, up. It, well, it, I suppose so. I suppose so. Next, Lee, we're on page 300. Shimon and Levi, and Shimon and Levi are considered very close brothers. They're not twins, but they're close brothers. Shimon and Levi, you know them. Baruch and Baruch Lam Boed. Amen. Shimon Levi Achim Kle Chamas Mecherotehem Bisodam Altavon of Shibi Kalam Altichad Kodi Kivia Pam Harguish Virtunam Krushor Aurur Apam Ki Az Vevratam Ki Kashata Achakem Yaakov of its Embe Yisrael. I want to talk about a couple of different words. First, on page 300, it's verse number 5. We have this word Hamas. And Hamas appears fairly regularly in the Torah. Um, fairly, I'd say perhaps maybe 8, 10, 12 times it appears in the Torah. In the Hebrew, the word Hamas means wickedness, cruelty, savagery. One commentator whose books I love to read, Robert Gordas, Blessings Upon His Memory, teaches it, teaches it as lawless. Hamas is lawlessness. And that's the Hebrew term. And you're familiar with the most famous context. And the context is that God looks at the community and says, I'm going to wipe, I'm going to wash this world right out of existence, wash and let them all go away. And then Noah builds this boat and he puts all the animals in it two by two and he and his immediate family float away and they're safe because the world isn't deserving of being left alive because it's filled with Hamas. And that's the Hebrew word. Isn't it ironic? The Arabic term that we hear when we hear the term Hamas is an abbreviation. And it stands for Islamic Resistance Movement. H, M, S, I don't know which each word is. I don't know Arabic. But it's an abbreviation. H, M, S, Islamic Resistance Movement. And it's striking to me that the Islamic Resistance Movement, which is nicknamed Hamas, the Arabic word Hamas sounds a lot like the Hebrew word Hamas. And I've, I have no idea. 
And if they did, then they're even more cruel than anybody. Hamas comes to be around uh, 1987, 1988. That's when they start emerging as a splinter of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is a political military rabble-rousing group in Egypt. So past, past 30 years. But um, here we have on verse uh, number five on page 300, Shimon and Levi were practitioners of Hamas. And so Jacob doesn't hold back. When he's on his deathbed, he's not only speaking, you know, kumbaya to his kids. He's, he's speaking as a father to his adult sons. And these are people who are old enough to be parents and grandparents in their own right. So these are grown-ups. So when I ask, are all of these statements from his death, deathbed blessings, or are they something else? You, know, you and I are able to look at the, these phrases. And these are recorded for all time. This is 3,700 years ago, and it's right in front of us. And for the rest of recorded time, anybody who opens the Bible is going to see this. So when a, a parent or grandparent or great-grandparent has an opportunity to say words to offspring, what will those words be? And how will they be recorded? How will they be held? How will they be perpetuated? Those are very powerful ideas. So... Rufka about Lakey, Tama Rufka about Lakey, Lishli Shi. On page three hundred, it's verse number eight. It's Judah, and we go on. He goes on to the top of the next page. Judah, as you know, becomes a preeminent leader um, amongst or within the the community of the brothers, the generation after Jacob, Judah, and we are called Yehuda, and eventually that term becomes Yehudim. And Yehudim becomes anglicized to Jews. So we're called Yehudim based upon this man, Judah. And you see how he's viewed by Patriarch Jacob at this moment of deathbed intimacy. Reach way up. Baruch Hashem, 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 Baruch Yehuda, ta yoducha, achacha yadecha, bao, refoy vecha, ishtak vulcha, bene vicha, gur ar yehuda, miter pene, lita, kara, rovats, kar yechla, vi, miki menu, loisur shev, imuda, muhoke mi ben raglov, akievo shilo, flo yikat amim, Australia gef and e rov, lasraka, bene otono, kibes viain, leve show, uvdamanavim, suto, Amen. <laughs> Blessings. Marie, Yamo, Moshe Ben Yonavachana, Levi. We're on page 302. And many people are familiar with the names Ruvain and, and Joseph and Judah, but some of the other brothers' names aren't quite as familiar to many people. And we are just going down the lineage, you might say, as we are here on page 302. And his name is Zavulun or Zebulun. Zavulun ends up as a tribe settling in the north, which is, um, we'd say, perhaps bordering Lebanon. And in the ancient days, 
Live unknown, which nowadays we use in English as Lebanon, live unknown, seems to have been either an adjacent kingdom or perhaps a part of ancient Israel as they understood their own boundaries. As they understood their own boundaries. When I was in, I don't know, middle school, I learned about the Louisiana Purchase. I didn't understand at first how Louisiana as a state was different than Louisiana Purchase. We use the term. So, of course, Louisiana probably thinks the whole country should be Louisiana, but that's a different story. <laughs> Verse 13. Baruch Adonai Baruch Baruch Adonai Baruch Amen. Zvulun lachof yamim yishkan vulachof aniot v'yachato al tzidon yisachar kamar darem rovets ben hamish b'taim v'yar menuchat kito v'etarz kina emas v'it shichmo lispo v'hilamas oved. Zalman <laughs> 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 Le Hamishi Please quick question. Sure. What does Lashua Hashem mean? This is a really fascinating phrase. So we're looking at page three oh two and it's verse sixteen, which is readers of Leah, and we're going to speak about the tribe of Don. In English you say Dan. By the way, in Hebrew there's no ah sound. There's no vowel sound, ah. It doesn't exist. So any Hebrew word that is ah, often gets rendered in English as an ah. So Dan, for example. Hey, hey Dan. Okay, in Hebrew you'd say Don. You can't say Dan. It doesn't exist. Yeah. So this is, Dan. this is Don's to a reading, right? And then the next line, it's verse number 18. It's this interruption in the flow. Jacob is talking to each one of his sons, and he's saying something specific to each one. And in the case of Ruvain, it's a mark of upset and maybe indictment. In the case of Shimon and Levi, it's definitely an indictment. In the case of some of the others, it's thinking about or hoping what their future will be once they leave the land of Egypt, because it's, that's still on his mind. Someday they're going to be leaving Egypt and going back home to the land of Canaan. And so he's, he's, he's simultaneously thinking about the past in terms of some of their behavior, their current experience, and the future. And that's the function of a patriarch, of an ancestor, vis-a-vis -vis descendants. And then he says this phrase. Yeah. Did this happen to, Did the, to each of the boys? Well, to some extent, kind of, kind of yes. <laughs> well, Judah, we, we know it. Yeah. Judah became the preeminent leader, so he becomes the source of the scepter, which is the sign of royal authority, and King David becomes the leader, and after David dies, Solomon, and then after Solomon, there are another, I can never remember, it's either 16 or 17 descendants of the David lineage who sat as kings over the people of the southern part of Israel. So, so Judah as the tribe is the tribe of scepter and authority. Exactly. Um, all the rest but all the other rest, we um, well, they settled in different parts of the country, and they had their own little um, mm -hmm. enclaves. And a way of thinking about them is kind of like the colonies during the Revolutionary Era. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. New Amsterdam would not have really cared about Virginia. And then later when we become really the colonies, you know, New York didn't really care about Massachusetts except to argue over land. And Georgia didn't really care about what's going on in Maryland, except to argue over land. 
that's how those colonies, and that's the same thing. These, these tribes often had internal conflict. In fact, if you look at Don, which is here, verse 16 and 17, Don is um, a fairly militaristic tribe, and, uh, there are, uh, and later on in the next passage, you know, Benjamin is too, and they, also, they often had little skirmishes with other tribes. But Dan's question about verse 18 seems to be some kind of a prayer that Jacob inserts in the midst of talking to his sons. Li of and for your salvation, kiviti, I wait or I am waiting, O God. I'm waiting for your salvation. He knows he's dying. He's 147. Hopefully it's a smooth transition to the next reality. But he knows he's dying. And so is he asking for personal relief of whatever his deathbed experience <coughs> is? Or is he thinking in some way in a, a global prayerful manner about his children and grandchildren? May their lives go forward in a certain way into the future. And I'm waiting for that. I'm hoping for that. Hope and wait, when you think about it, hoping and waiting, think about the English words, hope and wait. When we hope, we're often waiting. Hoping means that it could be for some time to come. Side note, in Hebrew, hope and wait are related to the word. It's kava and mikava. It's the same word, hope and wait. I was thinking about 147 years. That's a lot of years. That's a lot of years. I mean, uh, that's why I asked the question. Now, how long is in those days that they lived? Like to maybe to 90, 90 We, we know, like 780? Yeah. So I, yeah. I really, okay, I, I really don't know what that means. And so my, my, God's will. They lived to my, my thought, and I really want to move on because we've got to okay. finish the service. So we'll talk about ages over lunch, if that's okay. So let's look at the uh, Don Yadin, which is right here. Right there, Don. Baruch Adonai Baruch Adonai Baruch Adonai Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech alam, asher bochar banu mikol hamin, v'natan lanu et torto, baruch atad and I, noten ha-torah. Amen. Dan yedin amo k'achad shivtei Yisrael, yehi dan nachash ale derech shivifon ale orech ha-nashach ikve sus vipo richvo achor lishuot ha-kiviti Adonai. Melacholum, Asher Natan Lanu Torat and Ed, the Haye Alum no Tal Vital Anu, Baroka Tadina, Amen. Shall I have blessings? Elisa Tara, Tamalis no Rose Manu, Lishi. By the way, when, oh, if you want, again, uh, if you look at the map in the back of the book, if you turn to page 1512, 1512 is the last page of printed matter. 1512. And then in the very first map, you see the land of Canaan, Abram to Moses. Don't turn to that one. Turn to the next one. And it says, Israel in Canaan, Joshua to Samuel and Saul. And so it's the second map, north-south. And you see the tribes' names configured here. So in grid 2W, you see Asher. And in, in 3X, you see Zebulun, Zebulun. And in 2Y, you see Don, Dan. And uh, 
going north from 3 to 2x, you see Naphtali sideways and Asher sideways. So these are the uh, tribal acreages when the people of Israel left during Moses' time and they settled, they eventually settled in these regions. And these regions were operational for hundreds of years until eventually war somewhat destroyed some of the populations. But even today, we still talk about these regions. And so if you're going on a detailed tour of Israel, and uh, the guide has a little bit of history in his or her pocket, and they usually do, they'll say, we're going to the region of Don now. And that, that's common. And I mean, I'm watching the news, and I'm reading the news uh, about Israel. And Benjamin is in the south. Benjamin is in the south. And depending upon which news source you're looking at right now in terms of uh, the Gaza attack and the war and, and the IDF moving about, you'll see references to Benjamin. And, then, and, and Benjamin's down here. Look for Benjamin, that's Judah. Oh, and then okay. there's Benjamin right oh. there. Okay. So, um, when you, so you'll see in news Benjamin, and you say, Who's ben, what's Benjamin doing? They're talking about the, the region of the country. They still use it. Yes, I mean, so people live in, you know, Gush Benjamin, which is the area of Benjamin, or Gush Dan, or, or, or not so much Naphtali and Asher and Zavulun, although you could, but Dan is definitely used. Benjamin is used, Judah is used, certain tribes are still, certain regions are still called by these names that go back to this Torah reading or the time of Moses. Hmm. So now we're in God, uh, verse number 19, page 303. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll hold on to it. Thank you. That's for my own prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Baruch Adonai Baruch Adonai Baruch Adonai Gad gadud ye gudenu vhu ya gud ekev mesher shmen alach mo vi tem adne melech naftali ayala shlucha hanotein imre shafer. Amen. Hinter? Tamod, hinter was remain, Ulishvi. The concluding Ulia here on page 304, and we talk about Yosef, Joseph, and Joseph and Judah are the ones who become preeminent. Judah, because of frankly, his efforts to free Joseph and also to free other brothers, and Joseph because Joseph is the favored one of old man Jacob. And you can look at this uh, phrasing here. So verse 22, um, evidently in the ancient days, if somebody called you a wild ass, it was probably a good thing, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It depends. It's like, maybe. Oh, oh, so... Um, Oh, oh, I'm told, I guess, that wild donkeys are very strong and they can, they're, they're formidable and they're, they're not going to take any guff and, you know, they're going to go out, they're going to survive in the wilderness. So there you have it. Yeah. So... You use donkeys to protect cattle. From, from snakes, around. right? Wolves. Oh, wolves. Well, you know, coyotes and, you know. There you go, donkeys. So, so Joseph is going to, he's a protective one and... Um, Archers bitterly assailed him. They shot at him and harried him. There's no indication of that in the text. So he's probably waxing poetic about the brothers having at one point in time or another beat up Joseph or yeah, maybe attempt. Sounds like it, but he's making, this is poetry. You, know, you, you can talk poetically to your kids. Um, Why wasn't Joseph given more 
for his position and his, you know, and, well, okay, he just said, all right. It's right in the family. Have, uh, it's right both That's areas. true. That's true. Joseph, as a tribe, is a very large tribe and splits into two tribes, Ephraim and Menashe. And so they're named after his two, first, his two sons. Menashe is the firstborn of Joseph, Ephraim is the secondborn, but they're both very large population centers. And when they settle and they flourish for hundreds of years in Israel, they are economic powerhouses as tribes. And a lot of history happens in the region of Ephraim and Manasseh. Um, Elijah is traveling through there a lot during that time period, later, hundreds of years later. So um, Joseph's identity becomes fleshed out by his sons, and they become the namesakes for a population that's significant for a span of hundreds of years. You know, exactly. So if you look at the map, you won't see a map, a boundary of a Joseph tribe because Joseph's tribe splits into Ephraim and Menashe. Baruch Hashem. 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 Baruch <laughs> Amen. Ben Parat Yosef, Ben Parat Leayin, Benot Zadal Eishur, Vaymaru Varobu Vaistame Hu Balechitzim, Vatishe Beit and Kashto Vayfos Zroy Adav, Miade Avir Yaakov, Misham Re Evin Yisrael, Meil Avir Chabes Reka, Vechadai Vayvarcheka Berchot Shemayim Meal Berchat Tom Ruvetz Tachat. Birchat Shaddai and Verocham, Birchat Avicha Gavru, Al Birchat Hore, Atavat Givat Olam, Tiena Lurosh, Yosef Ulkokad Nazir, Echov. Amen. We have a calendar which divvies up certain passages into the readings. So officially the calendar for the day cuts it short. You can see one line about Benjamin. And it's verse number 27. Benjamin is a very powerful, hungry wolf. And he consumes his foe, but then he, um, he settles down, and in the evening he, he shares it. So, okay, fine. So Benjamin is also considered a very powerful military tribe. And there are, there's one occasion specifically, a couple hundred years after the Exodus, where Benjamin is involved in a civil war against the other you know, eight or nine tribes. It's, it's, it's a very painful, it's in the book of Judges uh, experience. Um, so Benjamin has that attribution of being a very powerful tribe. By the way, Benjamin is the tribe from which the first king, King Saul, arises. So certain tribes had you know, internal cultures that may have differed from other tribes. Yitkara, <laughs> 
Yitporach, Yitporach, Vishtabach, Vit Pakram, Yinase, Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Alal, Shame de Kudisha, Rehu, Leila, Makabra Katavishi, Rata, Tushbehata, Vinehemata, Da Ami, Ron Bialma, Vimeru, Amen. It's, it's juxtaposed with reading from the Torah that we offer our prayer for healing. And anytime you have a prayer for healing, of course, people can say prayers for healing on their own or in their own lives, but within the synagogue framework, we pray for healing for our loved ones right next to Torah. And we pause the Torah reading, in effect, because praying for health is an expression of love. And we say, Adam left court. Avram Yehuda ben Gisha, Ria Nevin, Elisa Esther bat Miriam, Elisa Tar bat Sarimenu, Elalea bat Aviva, Sarah bat Chana, Laura Baron, Navaronit bat Elisa, Karnea Chaya bat Sarimenu, Robert Spiegel, Jonathan Mathis, Avram ben Sarimenu, George Petinos, Chaya Esther bat Nechama, Yaakov Avram ben Chaya Chana, Douglas Halpern, Binyamin Yosef, Ben Nancy Rivka, Shmuel Shimon Ben Eliyahu, Lillian Thomas or no? Yaakov Ben Liora, Billy Singleton, Tracy Albers, Eliyahu Ben Laverne, Janet Gerwich, Lynn Jeffries, Rachel Chana Bat Saralea, Joel Eisenberg, Geffen Paz Ben Chana, Elana Chenya Bat Uzi, Linda Bat Mina, Ruth Bat Sari Imenu, Avram Ben Sari Imenu, Naomi Bat Elisheva, Amy Myers, Bobby Friedman, Eliezer ben Hadassah, Meir Rachel bat Sarimenu, Nir ben Orna, Asniel Chaim ben Tema, Rafael Moshe ben Sarrocho, Uri bat Sarimenu. Other names? Sarah bat Rizal and Tor bat Tengel. Rivka bat Kayla. The Colombians were hushed with one of our Amen. Almighty God, if you have blessed our mothers and our fathers, bring forth healing and strength to each and every person mentioned today, and each person mentioned and kept in thoughts in our own hearts. Sustain each and every one. Favor each one, for he, she, they are all your children. Bring forth the same touch that created the universe upon this person, every person, and may that touch instill love, hope, optimism, and confidence for the days ahead. Strengthen each person of the mind and of the spirit. Remove anxiety, fear, pain, and place within hope and a presence of peace. May this week ahead be a time for people to stand anew and walk forward into the future. And we all say, Amen. Amen. It is our practice these recent days to say a prayer over the members of the Israeli Defense Forces. And first, a list of names. These names are names of people who are fighting. They've come to us from members of our own synagogue. We have a list of names that we're maintaining. We're a small synagogue in Mobile, Alabama, and yet there are people within our community who know people fighting in the military in Israel. And we remember on this day, Idan Levy, Yoav Eliezri, Roni Golan, Yaakov Richman, Eyal Tukovsky, Daniel Shemesh, Avishai Liss, Elidor Haddad, Yisrael Eliyahu, Elio Oren, Eran Liss, Golan Van Meter, Tzach Mizlati, Elisa Cohen, Elad Cohen, Arad Lerner, Yoni Ivgi, Yonatan Poor, Guy Paz, Tom Paz, Noam Paz, Sawyer Mildworth, Michael Oferziv, Yuval Sarusi, Eitan Morgenstern, Jake Silberlicht, Matthew Flapan, Ronan Abramovich, Dolev Geva, Ori Bar David, Noam Moshe Dov Ben Rochel Etta, Shai Choresh, Nadav Topaz, Eitan Choresh, Duran Elbaz, Ovadja Breitman, Ravit Armiach, Ofek Geva, Ziv Geva, Tom Henneg, Yoshua Sigala, Danny Weininger, Amit Bazak, Maya Rose. 
May God who has blessed their ancestors bless, protect, and watch over the members of Israel's defense forces and its security services who stand guard over our land and the cities of our God from the border of Lebanon to the Egyptian desert, from the Mediterranean Sea to the approach of the Arava and wherever else they are, on land, in air, and at sea. May the Lord protect them from their enemies. May the Holy One, blessed be He, protect and deliver them from all trouble and distress, affliction and illness, and bring them home quickly and speedily to their homes and their families and their loved ones. May there be fulfilled in them the verse, for God is with you and God delivers you from all enemy and all trouble and all affliction and all pain, and you will have peace and safety and we all say, Amen. Amen. We rise as the Torah is lifted and dressed. Gabriel? Do you want to dress the Torah? Bezot HaTorah Asher Samoshe Lifnei Vene Yisrael Al Pi Adonai Biyan Moshe Yai dai 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 Returning in the Siddur in the prayer book now to page 177. Page 177, a prayer for our country on the left hand margin. On page 177, the lower left corner, there are two small stanzas of English on the left margin on page 177. Creator and protector of all, watch over our armed forces and all those entrusted with their safety as they daily put their lives at risk to protect us and our freedoms. Be with them in times of danger. Give them courage to act with honor and dignity, as well as insight to do what is right in your eyes. Fill us all with the gifts of love and courage that we may create a world that reflects your glory. May we each respond to the charge of your prophet. For what does not an eye demand of you but to act justly, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? May the one who brings peace on high bring peace and prosperity to our world and keep us in safety. And let us say, Amen. Amen. On page 178, the first line in Hebrew, followed by the English paragraph at the top of the page. Avinu Shabbat Shomayim, Tzur Yisrael v'go'alo, Borech et Medinat Yisrael. 
Reshit Tzmichat Gu Latenu. Avinu Shabashamayim, stronghold and redeemer of the people Israel. Bless the state of Israel, the beginning of our redemption. Shield it with your love. Spread over it the shelter of your peace. Guide its leaders and advisors with your light and your truth. Help them with your good counsel. Strengthen the hands of those who defend our holy land. Deliver them. Crown their efforts with triumph. Bless the land with peace and its inhabitants with lasting joy. And let us say, Amen. On page 184. The top stanza, the last three lines on the English side, it's those little three red lines of transliteration. Page 184. <speaking in Hebrew> Darche <speaking in Hebrew> Please remain standing. We turn now to the Elenu on page 205. Aleinu l'shabeach la'adon ha'kol la'tet g'dula l'yotzer b'reshit sh'lo asanuk g'ye aratzot v'lo samanu k'mishpachot adama sh'lo sam chelkenu kahem Vigoraleinu kechol hamonam Vanachnu korim umishtachavim umotim Lefne melech malche hamlochim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Shehuna Teshamayim Yosef Aretz Umoshav Yekara Bashamayim Imaal Ushchin Atuzo Ushchin Atuzo Begave Meromim Hu Eloheinu Einod Emet Malkeinu Evesulato Kakatu bitoratum, via data yom, via data yom, washebota elevavecha. Ki adonai, hua elohim, basha mayim mimal, thou haaretz, via haaretz, mitachat. Enod, Enod. Kakatuba Torah Techa, I don't know, I am Void, Venemar, the Hayad and I, Lamelech al Koharetz, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Ye Adonai Echad, O Shemal. Please, we all remain standing now 
on page 207, the Mourner's Kaddish. And we remember that many people have been taken from us, from our community, and many families have suffered their own individual losses. And there are those joining in online as well. And our thoughts continue to reach out to our Israeli brothers and sisters who are losing members of their families every single day. And we also have a shul calendar. And the older I get, the more this just hits me in the face. We have a shul calendar we've kept for 120 years of people from within our shul membership who've died associated with every single week of the year. That's holy. That's sacred. And we remember on this Shabbat, Charles W. Grodsky, Gus Grodsky, Meyer Rips, Fanny Linick, Janice Olinsky, Rosalie Weed, Edith Levy, Gussie Gay Cam, Leo Levinson, Rudolph Jacoby, Morris Simon, Jonathan Wesley Sutton, Carl David Schwartz, Charles Miller, Henry Bloom, Judith Ann Letterman, Yetta Levinson, Bert Silverstein, we remember Seymour Lichtenfeld, we remember Ruth Berger, we remember Randy Sherman. Are there any other names to mention today? And perhaps somebody at, uh, at home has a name to share as well. Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabo. Amen. Be'olma divara chirute v'yamlich malchute. V'chaye chon v'yome chon v'chaye d'chol v'yit Yisrael ba'agala v'zaman kariv v'imru. Amen. Yehe Shemei Rabba Mivarach La Alam Alme Omaya Yit Barach Vish Tabach Vit Paar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Shme Vikudisha Brich Hum Ela Min Ko Perchata Vishirata Tush Perchata Venechamata Da mi run ba oma vi maru amen. Yehe shalama raba min shamaya. The chayim olenu yal kol yisrael vi imaru amen. O se shalom bim romav. Hu ya se shalom olenu yal kol yisrael vi imru amen. We are seated. The two words that appear most in this Kaddish are the words Shmei and Shalom. Shmei means name, and Shalom means peace. In the narrow context originating, let's be honest, Shmei, the name, refers to the name of God. But in my mind, we associate the names of our loved ones with the name of God. We're attaching our loved ones to God's name. So the two most repeated terms in this entire prayer are name and peace. That's what we're praying for. We're praying for the peace of our loved ones whom we remember by name, attaching them to the name of God. And God will always be. So the name of God will always be. So the permanence that we associate with the name of God in some way enfolds the names and the memories of our loved ones. We'll conclude in a moment with the Adon Alam on page 211, and then it'll be time locally for us to have a little lunch in the other room. Page 211. 
Adonolam Asher Malach Beterem Kol Yitzir Nira Lie Naasa Vechef Tzokol Azai Melech Shemo Nikra Vyachare Kichlot Hakol Lovado Yimloch Nora Vehu Haya Vehu Hoven Vehu Yiyem Beti fara vehu echad v'ein sheni laham shilo lahach bira b'le reishi b'le tachlit v'lo haos v'hamisra vehu eli v'chai goali v'tzur chevli b'yet tzara vehu nisi Manosli Menat Kosi Biom Ekra Biado of Kid Ruhi Biet Ishan Via Ira Vim Ruhi Gaviati Adonaili Velo Iram Good Shabbos. Shalom, y'all. We love to have you in person. The message from this week's Torah reading is, I think, don't wait until somebody's moment of death to see the beauty. Let's become an instrument of blessing. Share a word of blessing with people you love today. Let each and every one of us be an instrument of blessing, of care. May you know that you're loved and cared for by God and by us. Until we see each other in person, shalom, kachabas, litro.